God. Praise God. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry, where we edify, we exalt, and we challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here, we also call sinners to salvation through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are going to be talking about when love is bad. When love is bad. And our case study is King David. And our short reading is 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. We start at 27. 2 Samuel 11, 1 to 27. Our foundation text is Romans 12, 9. Romans 12, 9. It says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Above what is evil, cling to what is good. Now, before we start to dive into our lesson, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, we honor you. Sweet, blessed Holy Spirit, hallowed be your holy name. Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we come before you. We ask that you teach us from your word. Open our eyes, open our heart, O oh Lord, and let your word do the work of cleansing in our lives, that we may become more like Jesus, conforming to the image of our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. When is love bad? Love is bad when you have to, number one, disregard the law. Many believers will not do anything that will earn them jail time. Oh, no. Mm -mm. But they see no problem in breaking little rules when no one is looking. For believers, followers of Christ Jesus, God does not have preferences as to which law you can break. God will not say it's okay to, to break traffic law as long as you are keeping spiritual rule. No. Any kind of law breaking is unrighteousness before God, although with different consequences. Any disregard for the law is capable of causing a disruption to our fellowship with God until we confess, repent, and forsake such unrighteousness. Samson's inability to keep simple dietary laws for the Nazarites and the spiritual law of association for the children of Israel, as given by God, became a growing habit that eventually destroyed and tarnished his legacy as a leader in Israel. Same goes for King David. When kings go out to battle at the time of the year, he decided to break that rule. He stayed back. And that led to something else. God wants his children to obey traffic rules. Don't say, oh, I'm, I'm going to the Bible fellowship, so I'm running late, so I have to put... Uh, 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 pedal to the matter, or uh, as they say, like I, I've got to speed up because I'm running late. Oh no, no. God expects us to obey traffic rules, much as He expects us not to shoplift. You see, and also to stay away from fornication. If you can fornicate as a believer. If you cannot shoplift as a believer, then we have to watch our speed on the road. Civil, moral, and spiritual laws 
uh, to protect us and protect others. When you break legal laws, you displease God. Let's go to the book of James, chapter 2, verse 10, James 2, 10. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. You see. So you cannot say, oh God, thank you, I'm not, I'm not a thief. Thank you, I don't gossip. Or you are breaking civil law, government laws. The only laws that we can break as believers and God will support us is any government law that asks you to worship an idol. That, God says, go for disobedience on that. I'm going to support you. But when that law is to protect other people and protect you, uh-uh, you cannot break that law. A genuine believer honors God in all areas of life, not in one area of life. Moving on. Love is bad when what you love will cause you to defraud others. David's inability to put his passion in check made him to defraud Uriah, his subordinate, who is lower than him in position and possession. He equally used his position as an advantage against a young and vulnerable Bathsheba. David made a mockery of his own character and integrity because he failed to practice the fear of the Lord when it came to what he loved, women. That was David's problem. He loved women. If our action will leave one person with the short end of the stick, God can never be a party to that kind of arrangement. I remember listening to a Christian radio program and a lady called in and she, she was basically waiting for the wife of the brother that she called in for whatever to die because she, she claimed that God told her that that man will be, his, uh, will be her husband. And the pastor that was answering that question said, ma'am, God wouldn't have spoken to you like that. And she said, oh, I know what I heard. No, God didn't speak to you because you are basically waiting to snatch another woman's husband, wishing uh, that woman dead. That's not God because you're trying to defraud the other person. Or you are going into business relationship with somebody and you intend on cheering them because they're ignorant about that business. And you say, that's been smart. No, you are a thief. Anything that will make the other person to come, off, uh, to come out worse off because they have gone into business relationship or even romantic relationship with you, that is defrauding them. And it's against God's law. 1 Kings 21 verse 10. 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 10. You shall speak to him, saying, this is God directing Elijah to King Hare. Thus says the Lord, have you murdered and also taken possession? And you shall speak to him, saying, thus says the Lord, in the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours, you see. Hare killed um, Naboth over his farm, you see. He uses power to defraud Naboth. And God said, you are wicked. As Naboth had been killed, so I will let you also be killed. And dogs will lick your blood, you see. It's really a wrong thing. If you think that is smartness, stop it. Because judgment is coming. If you don't change, to think you hurt others is a lie. Listen up. 
But to think you hurt yourself is wise. If you are thinking, oh, I defrauded this person, of course you will not call it defrauding them. You will say, oh, that was a smart business move. I, 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 I gained 10000 from that. That you know was wrong. If you think you are hurting the other person, you're hurting yourself because judgment is coming. To think you hurt others is a lie. But to think you hurt yourself is wise. Moving on. Love is bad when you defy yourself. David's disgust with himself after he killed Uriah and married Bathsheba was evident in many of his songs. As long as David kept his secret to himself, his health failed. He did not have the confidence to approach God. David induced himself with infirmity through sin. Listen up. He not only felt the distance between him and God, he was equally physically sick in his body. God wants our bodies to be healthy. Listen now, track with me, please. God wants our soul to be happy. And he wants our spirit to be holy. However, sin is capable of bringing physical disease to the body. Weigh the mind down with emotional guilt and ultimately pollutes one spirit by putting a wedge between us and God so as not to communicate with God and fellowship with Him. To love anything that God knows can cause us harm to our physical, emotional, and spiritual health is to hate one's life. If you should love something that God says don't do this, it's going to hurt your body. If you fornicate, you sin against your body. Don't do it. If you break spiritual law, you sin, you, 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 you polluting your spirit, don't do it. And you still go ahead or you engage in such habit. Listen, you hate your life. That's what you're saying. You hate your life. When you defile yourself, you disrespect yourself. That's what it is. You disrespect yourself. Let's go to Psalm 32. Verse 3, we stop at 4. Psalm 32. Verse 3, we stop at 4. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night, this was David confessing now, your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. You see, as long as he kept that same, he felt sick in his body. He was heavy emotionally with guilt. And spiritually, he didn't have the confidence to pray to God. You don't want to be in that position. Saying we cut your peace to pieces and hand you crisis. Let me back up and say that very slowly. Saying we cut your peace to pieces. All right? And hand you crisis. There is nothing good about sin. Don't do business with the devil. Moving on. Love is bad when you disobey God. And I have to confess at this point, the Holy Spirit, it was bullseye for me. Because this is my area of struggle. Now, I'm not saying I do disobey God intentionally. No. By the grace of God, I don't. But it is struggle for me because I want to fix things, you see. But I'm asking God to get me to the point that I 
won't even have the temptation of trying to fix things. You see? So when you love something so bad that it's tempting you to disobey God, then that love is bad. When whatever we love will cause us to disobey God, it's time to take a walk. Time out. Time out. It's not worth it. There's nothing that is so worth it to pollute the source of the calm stream from which our life drinks. The Holy Spirit is the calm stream who feeds our life with God's peace every day. You don't want to pollute that stream. No. God is not a cosmic killjoy who relishes in denying us what we can enjoy or what will make our lives better or make us a better believer to those in our sphere of influence and ultimately bringing glory in our lives. No, God will not say something that will make your life better. Don't do it. No. Whatever God says we should not do, listen up. He is saying, please do not hurt yourself. If it's something that is perfectly in line with his plan for our lives, God will say, help yourself to happiness. You see. A distorted view of God is the main problem. Many of us are. And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a witness. Listen, I, I'm like, God, you're slow. You're slow. I, I need to get this thing done. Because I know the consequence. If I don't get it in by so, so time, or if I don't do this, and God, you are telling me to hold on for how long? And I'm going, oh, you see. Until the Holy Spirit in his mercy says, Joseph in Zion, sit down. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, Father, I'm sorry. You see, or God uses a pastor, my senior pastor, to say, oh, no, Sister Josephine, you can't do that. No, no, you told me that the Lord told you. No, you can't do that. No, you're right. Yeah, you're right, you see. So it's, a, it's an area I'm working on, and the Lord is helping me. But what is your own area? Okay? Because I'm thinking God is slow. So I was trying to do things myself. What is your own view about God? Because it's your view that will now tempt you to want to disobey God. If our view of God is in line with the word of God, we will understand that God is the most caring, most sensitive parent who does not want any harm or hurt to come near his children. God is so, so sensitive about us, his children, you won't believe. I'm very caring. But when our view is distorted, then we think, oh, God is slow. Oh, God is not answering on time. And then we want to do things our own way. And then there's trouble, you see. But if our view was right, remembering that God is sensitive to our, 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 our circumstances and he doesn't want anything to hurt us, we will rest in his promise that he has said is coming. He will, you see. When you obey God, you are up for allness, I mean spirit, soul, and body, you will be all. Let's read uh, Psalm 18, verse 30, the book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 30. As for God, hallelujah, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all those that trust in him. And that's my prayer, that we always remember that. That when I'm thinking God is slow, I will remember his way is perfect. I 
don't know about you too. But that's what I'm working on. And I'm believing the Holy Spirit to get me there. Let's go to the book of Job, chapter 36, verse 11. It's a very popular Bible verse. If you're a Bible student, you know that by now. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity. It's not prosperity of dollars, no. But spiritual prosperity, peace of mind, you see. And their years in pleasures. To obey God is to love life. To disobey God is to hate life. Joseph and Zion, back up now. And say that slowly to help somebody. To obey God is to love life. To disobey God is to hate life. Don't. So when is love bad? Love is bad when you have to disregard the law. To break any government laws, we displease God. As long as that government law is not asking you to pray to an idol or don't read your Bible, if it's not against the word of God, you cannot break it no matter what. So pay your taxes and don't lie on your taxes. Amen. Uh, love is bad when you defraud others. When we cheat others, that is despising God, you see. Love is bad when you defile yourself, when our soul is polluted because of our actions. God dislikes it. Love is bad when you disobey God, when any action will result in interrupting our fellowship with God God says, no, you can't do that. So as a believer, where is the Holy Spirit convicting you right now? I confess openly my struggle. Where is your own struggle? Huh? What habit has you in its grip that you think you can never be free? Huh? If Christ is indeed the Lord of your life, listen, you can be free in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. I'm getting better. I'm not there yet, but I'm getting better. Okay? Search through the scriptures and pull out Bible promises of deliverance. And the ones I like most are the ones that remind me, those who, uh, who believe on the Lord shall not shall not act in haste. And I, I like to remember that. To tell myself, Joseph and Zion, you may think God is running late, you may think God is slow, but if you believe, the Bible says you will not act in haste. So look for Bible promises that will remind you. Chew on them and commit them to memory. Intensify your prayer against such strongholds. Speak to that stronghold to be cast down in the name of Jesus. Move away from anyone, anything, or any environment that can drag you back into the Egypt of the stronghold of what you used to love that is evil. So, for example, for me, I try to run away from anything that will put pressure on me. I don't want it. No. I don't want it. You see. Surround yourself with godly saints and make yourself accountable to the ones you trust. Whenever the enemy tries to lure you into that evil habit that you are trying to move away from, Start vocalizing those Bible verses. These are practical things. Begin to speak those Bible verses. Follow these practical steps until victory is established. I'm looking forward to that day when I will come back to this program to say, you know what? I don't try to fix things anymore when I think God is, 
is running late or is is slow. You see, I'm getting there, and I know I'll be I'll be back to share that testimony. Now, if you are a non-believer, the devil is not fighting against you because the devil already has you in his pocket. Oh yeah, say so what? Says the Bible. You're already in the devil's cage. You see. But you can come out in the name of Jesus. Oh yeah, you can. If you are ready to stop being the devil's slave, a link is coming up. Follow that link. As soon as I finish praying, we will meet you there. All right? And the Lord will help you as you go there. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Sweet blessed Holy Spirit, thank you for speaking to us through your word. Father, I pray that as I'm learning not to fix things for myself, to not work myself up and wait for your timing, I pray for myself that you will help me, Holy Spirit. And I pray for the listeners and 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 uh, viewers of this program that w in whatever area they are struggling whether they are defiling themselves or they are defrauding others or they are disregarding government law or outright disobedience lord you will grant them victory oh lord together father help us help us in our christian journey help our infirmities oh lord Make us strong, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, every day of our lives, we become more like Christ Jesus. Thank you, sweet, blessed Holy Spirit. For in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I will pray. Amen and amen. I will see you next week. Only if Jesus has not split the sky open. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good News Reporting is all we do, seeing souls safe is our ministry.